Welcome back to EVV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. And yes, you heard right. We are going to try to tackle and bust another photographic myth. Today, specifically, we're talking about the often mystical qualities that people attribute to medium format cameras and the look that they provide, specifically though, in terms of depth of field. Is there really such a big difference between an APS-C camera, a full frame camera, and a medium format camera? Can one really do anything that the others couldn't do? That's what we're going to tackle today. Now, I think we can all agree that depth of field comes down to basically three factors. The focal length of your lens, what given aperture you're using, and then what distance you're focused at in your actual scene. And, you know, we know basic things like the more telephoto a lens is, the shallower the depth of field gets versus the wider angle you go, the more depth of field you get. And I think we also agree that wider open apertures give you more shallow depth of field and closing those apertures down tighter give you more depth of field. And that when you focus further away in your scene, you get more depth of field. And when you focus closer to something, Thing in your camera, you get thinner depth of field. I think we can all agree on that. Okay, but a realm where we all seem to disagree for whatever reason is when things come to equivalency. But we have to understand this before we go any further in this video. So equivalency basically states this. Focal lengths need to change with different sensor sizes to give us the same kind of field of view. And apertures also have to change with different sensor size to give the same depth of field. Now, in this video, we're not gonna go to a full discussion of equivalency, so check out the article link in the description to find out more. Where people, though, still seem to get a little funny is when it comes to medium format. And it's just a larger sensor, which means our focal lengths have to get even longer, and our apertures will equivalently get even tighter to give us the same depth of field. But people start to think, no, 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 no. Medium format is where you go when you want dramatically shallower depth of field than any other camera can provide. And that's the issue we want to rectify today. The fact of the matter is this depth of field equivalency has been around since the inception of cameras. This is not a new subject. We've been dealing with this since we had large format cameras, medium format cameras, 35 millimeter film cameras, the whole shebang. So why do we have this confusion still today? Medium format film was, whether it's 645, 66, or 67 format, substantially more surface area there than 35 millimeter film. Now the digital era does change things quite a bit though because the majority of commonly available medium format digital sensors are not that much bigger than full frame cameras. They're 44 by 33 millimeters, which is now the standard for digital medium format. Larger sensors do exist, but they're incredibly rare and very expensive. For our experiments, we're gonna be looking at the three common formats, APS-C, full frame, and common digital medium format sensor size. And you're gonna to have to use these conversion factors. So let's just kind of get the math out of the way here first, okay? Now you may have heard this already, but when we go from an APS-C camera to a full frame camera, we use a conversion factor of 1.5 times, not only on the focal length of the lens that we're using, but also the aperture it works as well. So just hypothetically, let's say we've got a 35 millimeter F2 APS-C lens. We would then multiply that by 1.5 times and that'll give us our full frame equivalent, which would be about a 50 millimeter roughly F2.8. So now let's talk about the medium format side of things. And again, we're gonna bring everything back down to a full frame equivalent so they're all on the same playing field. That's the middle, that's the industry standard. Now, a medium format camera for our same example, we'd be looking at a 65 millimeter lens. We would times that by 0.8 times, and that would go down to 50 millimeters. And that would be an F3.5 aperture that when multiplied would go to 2.8. Now this is just hypothetical, but basically what we get is this. A 35 millimeter F2 lens on an APS-C will be roughly the same depth of field and field of view as a 50 millimeter F2.8 on full frame, which will be about the same field of view and depth of field as a 65 millimeter lens f3.5 on medium format. All right, let's talk about our test here for telephoto. We've broken out the vintage cameras in a controlled situation here. So we're gonna be focusing on the Minolta front badge right here. And then you'll be able to see the writing and the lens here out of focus in the foreground. And even the badge here should go out of focus in the background. We've got the Practica here in the background as well for an option. And then the foreground, we've got the Kodak Brownie. Then you got the wall behind us. We've got some specular highlights set up as well. So it should give us a nice repeatable test. Now keep in mind, we have different aspect ratios here. So we're 
we're gonna be cropping the APS-C camera and the full frame camera down to 4.3 to match the GFX. We're not gonna move the tripod in any way, shape or form forward or backwards. And we're gonna make sure that our verticals, the top and bottom of the frame are similar in all three shots. Now, it's not gonna be completely exact. Keep in mind that all three lenses are gonna have slightly different focal lengths. You know, uh, we are talking about lens breathing being a factor as well, but I think it'll still illustrate the purposes that we're trying to get across. Now for this test, we really want to endeavor to shoot the medium format Fujifilm at the widest aperture possible on this lens. So we're going to first compare the GFX against the Sony full frame. We're shooting the Fujifilm 110 millimeter F2 at F2. That means we're going to stop down the Sigma on the Sony full frame from 1.4 to actually 1.6 to keep the equivalent depth of field. We could actually get shallower depth of field on the full frame. Now when it comes to the APS-C format, the Fujifilm 56 millimeter 1.2 isn't going to be equivalent depth of field to the Fujifilm GFX at f2. So we're going to stop down the Fujifilm GFX 100 millimeter to f2.2, again, just to try to keep things equivalent. So at least for our full frame versus medium format test, the Fujifilm GFX is at its maximum aperture. And with APS-C, it'll at least be an equivalent depth of field. All right, so now it's time for a wide angle test. We're actually shooting under the bridge here today just because we've got a lot of different light levels changing outside. So this gives us a little bit more consistency. You can still see the light change a bit, uh, you know, and we'll do some clever framing to get it past that, that bad word. Now for a wide angle test, we're gonna be shooting everything at a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. So that means on the Fujifilm APS-C, we're shooting the 16 millimeter lens. And on the Fujifilm GFX, we're shooting their excellent 30 millimeter lens. Again, we wanna keep the 30 millimeter as wide open as possible, that's f3.5, but we can shoot all three photos stopping down the APS-C and full frame lenses to get the equivalent aperture. So for the Sony full frame lens, we're shooting the 24 millimeter at f2.8, and for the Fujifilm APS-C 16 millimeter, we're stopping that down to 1.8. All right, so let's take a look at the results of our test here. First, the telephoto controlled situation. So medium format versus full frame. Here you can see at equivalent apertures, we're basically getting the same result. Any differences are incredibly minor. And so I'm not seeing a look difference here. Now let's take a look at medium format versus APS-C. We did get the apertures equivalent. As you can see here though, the medium format sensor has slightly shallower depth of field. I think that's largely due to the fact that on the GFX, we have a slightly more telephoto lens and that does give you a little bit shallower depth of field. But as you can see here, it is an incredibly minor difference. Now the look of the areas where things are transitioning in and out of focus will look different, but that's because the lens is used, nothing to do with a specific sensor size. Now, a lot of people like medium format cameras for wide angle work, but let's take a look at our test that we shot here. Now, we were able to get all three lenses to the same equivalent aperture, so we can look at all three side by side. We don't have to separate them out. And again, looking at our shots here, our depth of field is very similar. I'm really not seeing a major difference from one format to another. And so again, we're not really seeing that depth of field advantage that medium format is supposed to have. When it comes to depth of field, on the major formats that we're talking about, APS-C, full frame, and medium format, we're talking about the smaller medium format sensors that are very common nowadays. I just don't think you can get a unique depth of field look one way or another. They're basically all equivalent. You can get a very similar feel out of all three formats. So I just don't think nowadays depth of field is really something you need to worry about. I mean, after all this, there's no difference really in depth of field. I mean, is there even a point going to medium format? And I think you do have some practical reasons to go up to the larger format cameras. Now medium format, especially the 100 megapixel sensor used in the GFX 100 and 100S, do offer significant image quality advantages, but there's nothing unique about the way focus falls off in the images. I just don't think there's a mystical look that you're getting with medium format that you cannot replicate with the other cameras. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and, and hopefully you appreciate what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're not trying to slag any format. It's a celebration of all the formats being wonderful. I just don't think there's a magical look in any of the formats. You gotta look for other reasons why you would choose a camera system. So there are a few great articles on deepyearview.com that get more into where medium format does and does not have image quality advantages. For this video, we just wanna focus on depth the field. So check out those links below if you want to learn more. Now, of course, in the comments below, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of 3D poppers and micro contrasters. And I'm sure we're all going to get along and it's going to be civil and great. And we're just going to have very intelligent discourse. So check those comments out below. Please go to deepyourreview.com. You can see the shots that we took here just so you can see for yourself the depth of field differences more closely. But otherwise, as always, like and subscribe to the channel. We always appreciate you guys joining us and we'll see you soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.